Thanks, Rich. I am so excited you're here. Today we are, we are with Tara Reeb with the Gluten-Free Pizza Club. And if you spell her name backwards, it's B-E-E-R, which is beer. And we're having pizzas and pizza and beer. It's the greatest <laughs> thing ever. We're going to have some holiday beer too. So I asked Tara what her favorite food was, and she told me chicken enchiladas. And I said, cool, I'm going to make a pizza. And that's what we're going to do. So I started off with a, um, a can, I won't say a can because it came in a pouch, enchilada sauce. And when I tasted it, uh, it was okay. It, it, it needed, it had a little lacked in depth of flavor. It just needed something. So I put some herbs and spices in it. I put a cinnamon stick in it and steeped mm -hmm. that for a while <clears throat> and let it simmer for about 15, 20 minutes. So we've got a little bit more flavor in our sauce. And on the podcast page, you probably already know this because you're on the podcast page because you're watching this, the recipe will be there. And so you can see how you can take a can of pre-made enchilada sauce, gluten-free of course, and make it even better. So we're starting with the sauce as any pizza should be started. And then I'm adding some, I haven't had chicken enchiladas in eons because I can't do dairy. Um, chicken enchiladas are generally made with corn tortilla, so that's really not a gluten-free issue if you can find a place that's gonna be gluten-free, safe, and friendly. Um, so I'm going by memory what I thought a chicken enchilada tastes like, <laughs> but I remember distinctly onions, a lot yes, of onions. Absolutely. So we're putting a layer of onions on, and there's also some onion powder. I added extra onion powder to the sauce too. And then we're gonna do three different types of cheese. I remember cheddar cheese, so we're gonna do a layer of cheddar on the bottom. Now, most people are probably thinking right now, wait, the cheese goes on the top, you can't put the cheese on now. And so I'm gonna tell you there are no rules, no rules whatsoever when it comes to pizza. You can make anything a pizza and put it on whatever order you want. It generally will all work out in the end. Okay, now we're gonna put the chicken on which all I did was take some chicken tenders, put some salt and pepper on them, cooked them up in a pan, and then I shredded the chicken. And we're almost there. And once I get this in the oven, we're gonna have a conversation with Tara. And now we're gonna add some mozzarella, and this is 50% whole milk mozzarella and 50% skim mozzarella, so it's gonna give you an ooey gooey cheesy goodness, but not be too heavy. And then when the pizza comes out, we are gonna add some components, but I will wait. Oh, that's not cheese, that's chicken. I will wait till <laughs> later to tell you what those are. It'll be a surprise. And because I'm dairy-free, I also, I made it earlier, and I'll show it to you later when this pizza comes out. I made a dairy-free pizza and when, um, without any cheese whatsoever, so I made a few changes to that, and we'll talk about that when, when we're ready to eat. So the pizza is going in the pizza oven. Okay. We are in, and I'm going to slide over here, and we're going to have a talk. Perfect. Thanks so much for being yes, here. thank you. I'm excited We must, we must toast to our favorite uh, gluten-free beer, favorite blonde. Favorite blonde. Thanks there for being we go. here. Holla Daily is, um, she's, she was one of the first companies that we connected with when we started. We started, mm -hmm. I think, the same year or maybe within a year of each other, mm -hmm. and I was, I don't know about you, but I never liked really beer before when I could eat gluten. Oh, did you I drink loved a lot of beer. You I loved did. It? Yes. Now was... I love this. I mean, I love the I'm stout. I'm so thankful. Once I found out about Holla Daily, I was, yes, I've been multiple times. And when they were in the stores, I got it for camping and everything. So what? do you like the darker ones too, or just the lighter ones? I would say my favorite is the Buckwit Belgian. I like that one too. Which it's I know really is good. seasonal. Yes. Um, and they had a red that was on tap. For oh, a while, what was that? Rich, and I'm not which sure if that? they. You know? I don't remember that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't remember, but I think hopefully they're bringing it back again. Yeah, they always seem was... to rotate. They have the pumpkin one now. Oh, okay. Yeah. I tried that when when Karen was here, and um, I actually didn't hate it. And I'm like not pumpkin spice okay, girl yeah, at all. I'm not either. And it was it was really good. It was good. I'll yeah. have to go. Yeah, and you try definitely it need to try it. Okay. That, so. Yes. Definitely frequent it there. So you've been celiac since 2015. 2015. Yes. So that's a long time to go through life not knowing anything's wrong. So it's yes. I, I know people who are listening, they, and I know I used to mm -hmm. like to listen to other people's like symptoms, like what did you have, yeah. how did it work? So <laughs> you know, it, it, tell us a little bit about how how did you figure that out? Um, so pretty much, I started having just major issues with my stomach, and you know, it wasn't going away. So I'm, what's going on here and um, you know I've heard stories where people go years without being diagnosed but I think it's an eight-year average actually yeah which surprisingly I think things are changing now Hopefully, with yes. doctors I think they're starting to realize this is a real thing and it's common 
Um, so once I went in, the doctor did some blood work on me, and um, she said, well, we'll check for celiac, but that's, you know, probably not an issue. So I was like, okay, I hope not. Um, we got the results back, and it tested positive. So oh. I did the endoscopy, and um, it confirmed it. And so probably within a month, I was diagnosed, and... Well, the doctor at least it was said, quick, and it wasn't like, yes, oh, yes. I think it's IBS. No, no, I think it's, yes. that. yeah, because that I've heard stories that it could go We're on just, and on. But like you said, that's one of the first things they test for now yes, based absolutely. on how you present, especially with, with a lot of gastrointestinal mm -hmm. issues. So thankfully it was quick, but then it was, okay, well, gluten-free for life now, so go ahead. <laughs> What now? about celiac uh, before that? Uh, I started to research it in the weeks leading up to being tested. Um, my roommate at the time actually was celiac. Oh. So when I had moved in with her, I'm like, oh, that must be awful. That like, Sorry, I don't, I don't know. Laugh, no, I, I, like, yes, I had no idea. Um, and she was diagnosed years ago, I think when she was maybe 14 or something. Oh. She was younger. And yeah. so you know, just the conversations with her about what was at the store back then, and what she was able to find to eat, Nothing. and restaurants didn't know what it was no. at all, and so I think I was very lucky in 2015, happened, yeah. because, you know, restaurants were starting to get things on the menu, and be more aware of it. And, and more in the grocery stores. And the sure. grocery stores, they have options, and Lots so of it was... I mean, I'm very thankful that it happened when it did. Did um, you have, did you look back over your life w when you got the diagnosis and go, oh, I remember feeling bad, all these, did you have issues that you just kind of... A kinda, little bit. When I, you read the symptoms, you know, it's not just the stomach issues. No, no, there's you know? so, so, I mean, so I've, long, yeah. I've been anemic forever. Um, I do have Hashimoto's hypothyroidism. Oh, well, those... So they, they go, go hand, hand in hand. hand. Yeah. So that was diagnosed when I was first year of college. Wow, okay. Way back when. <laughs> um, you know, brain fog. Uh, I have horrible short-term memory, so I think a lot of that has come together. Did, that, did your short-term memory come back when you went gluten-free? Did you uh, get any of that? You know, I still struggle with that. <laughs> so I don't know if there's still something more wrong. <laughs> I, I, think, I think all humans have different levels of me yes. mem memorability. I don't know if that's even yeah, a word, but... Yeah. Um, my short-term memory is, is going away as I get older and get busier, but yeah. Yeah, you can work around that. Exactly. Lots of notes. Yeah. Um, I know they say some of it, too, your growth could be stunted. So I'm 5'1". Granted, my mom is also 5'1". So my dad is 6'2", so that kind of... <laughs> right. Well, I, <laughs> I wonder if that would have been a, a factor It could well, have, depending eventually. when your body started reacting. You can yeah. have the gene and you have the yeah. susceptibility to it. The celiac mm -hmm. and it never even you know right. triggers. Yes. It's just there's from when what it I triggers, read, it's a trigger and it could be later in life, it could be earlier mm -hmm. in life, and you just never know. Exactly. I just know that looking back, I had gastrointestinal issues my entire life. Always something. And I always always mm -hmm. say it's like back then in the seventies and eighties that you know, and even now, it's not like you sit down and say, Hey, I, I need to have a conversation up to you with you about my bowels. Right, I, I yeah. need to, can can you tell me <laughs> is, is this normal? Do you, do you, you know, nobody oh, yes. talks about yes. that. No. And so you just, you internalize like, okay, I don't know what normal is. I don't have the internet yeah. to go, you know, Google that and mm -hmm. find out. So I'm just going to accept this is the way like, everybody this is. what is. it is. But yeah. then later in life, I'm like, wait, no, 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 this, this is not right. Uh -huh. And so whatever I have going on has been for a, a very long time. Yeah. And, and my body was trying to tell me, but I, I was not listening at mm -hmm. all. And then I had to finally start listening. So you, um, shortly after being diagnosed, you started a gluten-free pizza shop. Yeah. And I'm going to guess you love pizza as much <laughs> as we love pizza. I do. I really do. Um, you know, and I never even liked pizza all that much beforehand. And then you couldn't have it. My brother would always <laughs> yeah. demand that the family orders it for dinner. So, oh, so you <laughs> it was frequently, lover, you know, and I was like, okay, that's enough pizza. Um, I think my body was kind of telling me, no, I don't want your bread. Um, but then once I started ordering gluten-free pizzas after the diagnosis, um, I just fell in love with it and realized all the good toppings that these restaurants have now. And um, So yeah, I decided to start the pizza club and figure out which restaurants were celiac safe, um, at least, you know, some level of considering cross-contamination. Yeah, the best effort that and figuring can. out the crust. Which right. Thankfully, now you guys are in probably 80, 90 percent of the restaurants. 
Yeah, we've got a, we've got a lot of um, pizza restaurants covered for yeah. sure. We still have a ways to go, but yeah, we're in, we're in most of the major ones. Yeah, which really makes us very happy. You know, we're at Perry's now. Oh, you are. Every Perry's. Okay, well that's they, good to know. Their pizza are so amazing. I mean, I think they're amazing in themselves, but because I'm dairy free, um, it seems like they okay. put more toppings on when I tell them not to put uh, cheese on. And I, very rarely do I go somewhere order pizza, even if it's on my crust, mm -hmm. and enjoy it without cheese because they just never. I, I, if I forget to ask, if they say, "Oh, put more toppings," sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. Okay. Um, but Perry's just. I think that's just their thing. They put tons right. of Right. The, the one I love the most is the Five Burrows. It's like a, a supreme pizza. It has three okay. different meats, all these veggies. Oh, stuff. that sounds good. And they do a great job with our crust. And, okay. Uh, yeah, absolutely delicious. It's not enough, enough about me and my pizza crust. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good crust. <laughs> I appreciate knowing I can go somewhere in that. Well, the yeah, crust for sure is safe. And yeah, it's see, not I, I wouldn't. It got to the point where we were in the early development stages mm -hmm. of this that I refused to go out and get pizza because I knew the crust it was going to be on and yeah. I knew it was going to be horrible. And even if I, if there wasn't enough charge, I'm not going to pay for something that, and I think the hardest thing, and this is, this is what really drives Rich and I, is like, he can eat whatever he wants. Yeah. And so if we go somewhere to have pizza, and he orders a pizza, and I order a pizza back then, I got this, you know, to, yeah. it wasn't pretty, you know, <laughs> no. and then he's got his beautiful, oh, conventional, yeah. Yeah. real pizza. It's like, there's nothing worse than sitting there and going to finger him less than a meal. And, and his is half yeah. the cost of what yours yeah. is when you get the bill. <laughs> right. I mean, that's just not fair. And yeah. then I, there, there's so many of those little things about living gluten-free that mm -hmm. that people don't don't even think about. Yeah. And I'm sure that you went through that as well as you were discovering mm -hmm. places that you could eat. You probably ate a lot of bad food. I ate a lot of, um, I don't know how many $7 loaves of bread I bought at the grocery store and threw away over the years. Yes. Because yes. I've been gluten-free since 07. Okay. And there was, that was before Udi's. There was right. really next to nothing. And yeah. then around 10, I think it was, everything started popping. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I, I had a lot of that. I think <laughs> the hard thing is the sauces. I mean, enchilada sauce. You you have to look at the camera. You do. Some of those. Back in 07, you couldn't buy enchilada sauce that didn't have weed in it. Okay. Because so I remember yeah, looking. Because I was didn't do dairy for until 10. That's what okay. I, it, took, it took me three years to listen to that yeah. part of my life. I'm, I'm still pushing that aside. I knew it was a different thing. And yeah. I'm like, oh, no, I'm okay. No. So I, I did try to make enchil enchiladas. And mm -hmm. funny, I was looking, and there was this, um, at King Supers, there was it, this powdered enchilada mix. And okay. I, like, i got to look at the ingredients. So yes. Like, yes. Wheat flour. No, you don't no, need the on. You don't need it. Yes. So the Good Free Pizza Club, it, club, is that a group of people? Is it like a membership? You get in, you get asked, and then you kind of you all cross together and go to pizza places? It's, or Yeah, it's pretty low-key. Um, there's... The core is me and another friend who is gluten free as well. And so, um, over the years, I've met a few other people who are gluten free as well. And so, just kind of a reason to get friends together to come and eat some pizza. Um, time. Yeah. So usually there's a few non gluten free people there as well. And so there, I make sure they have to eat the gluten free pizza. Yeah, because <laughs> you're going to eat the rule. That's the rule. To, yeah. So you could maybe order a regular beer, but. It's also fun because you'll normally I'll go to a restaurant and I'll order a gluten free pizza, but it's just the one pizza, one topping, mm -hmm. you know, whatever uh, the pizza comes with. But with the club, you're able to order maybe three or four, and so we'll try different things. And so I love the specialty. Yeah, I, I appreciate the specialty pizzas a lot of them. Make. Yeah, there's some like, amazing pizza. Have you been to Bardo? No, not yet. Oh my God, the okay, spicy I'll clam pizza. I think I'm telling spicy everybody. Clam. Spicy clam. And I don't do okay. spicy, but I, I do this. Yeah. And I can do some sheep and goat cheese. Okay. A little bit more of that. Like a little bit of cow usually bothers me, um, but some sheep and goat. That's and so this is better. made with a sheep sheep based cheese. Okay. Um, it is so good. You don't think about clams. Like yeah, pizza, I, I but, never you know, would have thought. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> well, I'll have to put that down for one right now. They have a great sure. happy hour too. Oh, good. So, Perfect. but their happy hour is early. Is it early, Rich? It, yeah, it ends at six. So okay. That, that's it's four to six. Four to six. Four to six. So that's a oh, yeah. work at three o'clock. Yeah, and, and get, go, there get there early. by four. Perfect. You got two Perfect. hours, but yeah, yes. it's, it's an amazing uh, pizza. And, okay. Yeah, and then the, my other favorite is Bar is a uh, uh, Viali. Okay. They have um, what is it? It is 
I think it's uh, caramelized onion. Um, they will, they'll put a manchego on there, which is sheep, um, mm. so I can eat that. Okay. And I forget what, it, and maybe there was truffle, and I forget what it's called. But anyways, there's some <laughs> amazing so things that. <laughs> I, I can eat the entire pizza, and they, and they serve a 12 inch. Oh yeah. And okay, I might take you two know slices. You know it's good home. if you eat. The yeah. Of it and that's happens. what I mean. I know how filling our yeah, crust is. Yeah, definitely. It's so good. So good. I think <laughs> Mas Chaos had a. They probably still have it. The I think it was cauliflower and. Oh, I haven't had that one. Something else was on it that was I think cauliflower and potato maybe. It was oh, really that's, interesting. That's the broccoli and potatoes. Very it was, rooty, starchy. Yeah, yeah, it was really interesting, but it was delicious. And normally I wouldn't order something like that, but yeah, you definitely we decided to, let's try something yeah. different. Why not? That we're all about stepping outside the box mm -hmm. when it comes to pizza. And there's some really, really amazing pizzas out there. Mm -hmm. I know Mott's Chaos used to have a, well, I think it was, it's a seasonal, and they bring it in back in and out. I think it's a okay. fig and goat cheese. Oh. And there's something else on it. Okay. Can, prosciutto. That is amazing. really good. If you like figs, you yes. Have oh yeah, That's figs nice. and goat cheese is, is great together. So, mm -hmm. so where um where are some of the places you've been? You so you, you when you go in, do you get the restaurants? Do they give you like a, a special deal so that you Sometimes, can order all these pizzas? I usually try to talk to them on social media a little bit ahead of time, um, kind of give them the heads up. Uh, most places are excited about it. Some that are now closed, <laughs> we're not Which excited we're about it. So <laughs> that's you know. That's that, but uh, yeah, most of them are excited, and so you know we'll tell them, you know, give us the, you know, the rundown on how you make your pizzas, how you know what what's the crust, um, how do you ensure cross contamination is is clear and everything, right. um, and yeah, so sometimes I'll just bring out their favorites. They might add an appetizer or you know garlic bread if that's you know a gluten free garlic, garlic bread and. Um, yeah, so they're yeah they're usually pretty excited about having us, and um, we'll tweet about it, take some photos, and then we'll blog about it later as well. So, so now that you're doing this podcast and you're going to be out there, there's yes. probably people that are going to say, "How do I? How do I become part of yeah, the supper yeah. club?" So, how, so if somebody's listening or watching, how do, how mm -hmm. do they get on the invite list? So they can go to glutenfreepizzaclub.com. And the contact page, top right, I believe. Um, just contact me through there, or I'm on Instagram and Facebook as well. So okay. they can just message me through that, and I can send the invite okay. as we plan the next one. So Well, I'm definitely have yeah. the link and all that information on the Perfect. podcast page. Yeah. So the last time we saw each other was at the um, Crush yes. Pizza Holiday Daily and Us event. Mm -hmm. And we had talked about you maybe starting the Supper the Club, supper and you club. bought the URL, right? I did buy the URL. I have it. Because I, I mean, it. that that just spread. I mean, you could go. It's, there's so many oh, other places absolutely. that aren't pizza that the list is quite mm -hmm. long. That would be fun. I yes, I have the URL, so that's step one. So when are you going to start that? Hopefully soon. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully this fall. That's the goal to um, start that up. Start. And yeah, yeah. Is it live? Is it? Is there anything? Up Nothing there is on there yet. So don't don't go so there. So don't yet. go there. But um, <laughs> yeah. It I'm glad you could get the not URL. Found, but you know, it is a hobby, so that is supper with two P's, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> or could be gluten free super club. It, Whoa, that I sounds mean, like either way, it's the same. <laughs> they're, right? they're, yeah, that's for sure. Yes. But I think that's great. You just you know because a lot of times, if you have non gluten free friends, and I'm sure mm -hmm. you know this, uh, luckily for us. It, it's that they, they have to go where we want to go because yeah. they don't want to be responsible for us not eating right. and they don't want to see us pout the entire right. <laughs> they're, they're also really, very yeah. nice about making they sure are. you can go right. there and usually I can find something anywhere yeah that's what I always say I mean I can it, it, it's I'll harder it for the right. dairy for me so now mm -hmm. it's just like I can usually find anything but there were times early on in my previous life previous to Rich and mm -hmm. I, it, it was all new it was new to the family and everything I mean that there were times I literally I can't tell you how many times I watched people Eat. Yeah, and I still do depending on the venue. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of networking events now and, and, and oh, other yes. things they're, they're getting better about it. But mm -hmm. all the networking I was doing, I was doing a lot during that time, and so I just basically went and drank and, yeah. and had a carrot, and yeah. that that was yep, my meal. That sounds about right. And if I was really lucky, I got some celery and maybe some olives. Yeah. Um, and but that that's all changing for the better. Thank Absolutely. Goodness, because yeah. it's 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 hard, and and I do this thing. Um, I do this pitch I, I, in, in our business. You sometimes have to pitch yeah. to get investors. Yeah, like of that. course. And I just did one, and um, I added this part to the beginning of it. And I've been wanting to do it for years, and I thought it was too 
hokey. Okay. But I but I wanted people to understand what it's like to lose what we've lost. And so I, I tell everybody to close their eyes and imagine okay. they're eating their most favorite food. And you know, how does that taste? Mm -hmm. Imagine the joy that it's bringing you. And I tell them to open their eyes. And I said, you can never eat that food again. ever again. <laughs> <laughs> and if you think about it in those yeah. terms, whatever, I don't know what their mm -hmm. favorite food is. It could have been ice cream. It could right. have been pickles. I don't know. Anything. But, and it's not just a food either. I mean, that's a very simplistic way oh, to look absolutely. at it. absolutely. I mean, it's an entire food group. Yeah. And from pasta to you know, mm -hmm. pizza and everything. So what do you do for, um, do you find now that it's been, what, four years since you were diagnosed, mm -hmm. did you go through your replacement phase where it's like I gotta have everything I love in the gluten-free version to make kind of get you a through that. A little bit, a little bit. I definitely um, I went through some of my favorite foods and checked to see what was okay and what wasn't. So I was excited that peanut butter cups were okay. Yes. Those <laughs> um, are. You know, mac and cheese. I mourned, but I know Annie's, Annie's has yeah. a good one that's very similar bad. now. And the deluxe one's better than the regular one. Oh. Or good actually, to know. even okay. if you buy the regular one and you add your own cheese and some extra cream, <laughs> there we go. That's the then best. it's good. Yeah. yeah. But the um, pasta's not bad though. Yeah, the pasta, uh, bar barilla. Yeah, bro. There's so many now. I, I don't even notice the difference. There, Tinkiata was the only mm -hmm. pasta back in 07 that I recall. Okay. And now there are so many. And I still like Tinkiata for depending on the yeah. what I'm making what, with it. What it but is. I like the Barilla and um, the Ron, what is it, Ronzoni? That's not, it's okay. okay. Sometimes when those are corn, they have corn in them. And I think that mm -hmm. when the corn gets to be too much of the ingredient, it, they, they get a then little funky. Gets, yeah. But my mom, I always like tell this story and hopefully my mom will. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh -oh. <laughs> she, she's gluten free and dairy free too, um, mm -hmm. but because she has IBS and those were her two triggers, and that okay. happened to her about five six years ago. I mean, when she was oh. in her sixties. Wow. Okay. And anyway, she found this place up in the orchard that I think it was a olive oil and you know vinegar place, and they okay. had this imported Italian pasta. And she's like, I found the greatest pasta in the world, and she uh -oh. she, and okay. she she made it, and it was really really good. But it was just so funny. It's like she she had just attached herself to this pasta yeah. and I understand why it, w it was really really good but the the joy that she had thinking you know just talking about she it can, yeah yeah she's like this is the oh, best and it was really really good mm -hmm. I, I find that many of the imported pastas are so much better I don't it's, well, it's I think processed they're pure yeah yeah it's and it's more in the pure form there's hardly any ingredients but it's the way mm -hmm. they make it so but at least we have pasta options. We have yes, beer now. We, we have do. pizza. I don't think there's too much. There's really missing. just about anything you can have. Even I mean, soy sauce. I love sushi. So tamari. I mean, even, that's good. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's. I don't miss soy sauce. Fine, so I like my so. tamari. I think mm -hmm. the only thing that the nobody has come up with a definitive replacement is the tortilla. Not one that isn't too gummy. Isn't doesn't break Funky apart in some way. right away. Yeah. Yes. The tortilla. People ask us all the time, can you make a tortilla? And I'm like, no, no, not going to do it. <laughs> I got enough to I do. don't blame you. Yeah, yeah. those ones are difficult. That would be hard. And then the other would be the, the bag. There's some bagels that are okay, but mm -hmm. they're not... They're not... I don't think they're there yet, and I don't know if they'll ever yeah. get... They might get there. I think the but. nice thing is... Well, the interesting thing is people think gluten-free is healthier. Yeah. <laughs> Not necessarily. It's still the same role of the processed foods, you know. It's, yeah, and it's, it's more corn-based, and so you know, your body based. doesn't process that as well. And yeah, and it's all so in it's moderation. So it's not necessarily, right. you know, better for you, but if you're going with the meats and veggies and just a very basic yeah, you, diet, then it's different. You can't but. have gluten-free replacement foods at every meal. Right, I mean, I, I right. don't. I just, I rarely eat pizza anymore, and mm -hmm. um, we don't. I don't eat much bread. It's just, that's just kind of the yeah. evolution. I think once you're gluten-free for four or five, you know, 10 years, mm -hmm. you, you've got to eat a little bit differently because it's just, one, it gets right. expensive. It does. And it two, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of, you know, mm -hmm. carbs. <laughs> yeah. And, it's, and sometimes it, it you still just need processed. that though. You yeah, just you need, do. you know what? I want something comforting that I'm used to. And so I'm going to get that. Annie's I, mac and cheese. Or, right. Because I mean, sometimes you have to have, mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I get these weird... Um, cravings it's like I want to bite into something like a sandwich it's not mm -hmm. like I want the bread it's almost like I want the textural experience something of a with sandwich. the substance of yeah. it yes it's, it's kind of weird and so then I make it makes a sense. sandwich yeah, yeah. so <laughs> I know peanut butter and jelly sometimes if I want bread I'll 
make peanut butter yeah, and jelly. And sometimes that's it's like that's, that's just what I need right now, and that's yeah. what it's going to be. So yeah, you don't have to fine. Uh, apologize for what you need <laughs> exactly. when you need it. For sure. Yeah, definitely. Well, it looks like the pizza is ready, so looks I'm going to go finish this off. Okay. Rich, can you grab me the big knife? Because it's over there, and I'm wired. Okay, so we've got the enchilada pizza. Looks mm -hmm. like it could could be um, that one there. Could be enchiladas. So on a pizza. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to add to it now is we're going to add some co uh, some queso fresco, okay. which this is the crumbly kind. Um, this is going to give us a bit of our cold component. Hey, Rich, can you grab my dairy free pizza too? Just for because we need more cheese. You know, enchiladas are cheesy. I mean, oh, that, yeah. that's what, that's what you think That's the best part about. of them, I think. Yeah. So we, that's why I put three cheese on here. And then we're going to put some um, some fresh tomatoes on here just to reinforce that tomato-y flavor. And then we took, I took some um, just corn tortillas. I cut them into okay. strips and I fried them. And there you go. Crispy tortillas because you need a crispy component. Mm -hmm. This is going to be our crispy component. And that's one of the best parts of an enchilada is the edges that might not have been sauce that are sticking up yes. in the oven and they get really crunchy. Yes, I agree. So I do remember. And then this is some cilantro. Perfect. One for color and two for some flavor. It looks great. Okay, so. Can I take a picture before sure. you? Sure. And I'm going to, where's my pizza? So of course, we have to blog about this. Yeah, I'm going to cut yours first, and I'm going to work on mine. So go ahead. Okay. Okay. Good. Rich, did you have any plates out? I don't think I grabbed any. No. Okay. I'll grab some. Okay, so cutting the pizza. I like to cut the pizza with a big knife because a pizza cutter seems to destroy my uh, toppings. You know, I kind of roll them through yes. there. So. I normally cut with a knife because I'm living with someone who's not gluten free, and so the oh older, yeah, you don't want to go near that pizza I just, cutter. Yeah. I just let it go. <laughs> well, <laughs> I I you. saw an article. Where was it? New York Times. I don't remember what it was, but there was an article about you should cut your pizza with the scissors. I did not read the article. I meant oh, to. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So there's no rules. You can yeah. cut your pizza. Okay, I'm not. I'm gonna make sure that you get all of your crunchy goodness because yes, this fell there off. There we go. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Now, because I'm dairy free, I cannot eat this, but full disclosure, dairy's the only one that I cheat because I don't know why. I'd never cheat on gluten. It's not good, not a good thing. It's and not I, worth I it. I might have had a slice of the test, test pizza earlier. <laughs> so, because I'm dairy free, I made myself an altered version. I don't get any cheese, so I have the sauce. But what I did with the sauce is I wanted to give it a little bit more depth. So I put some mm -hmm. vegan, um, some dairy-free sour cream in there and then some okay. nutritional yeast and mixed it together. And I've got uh, spinach, which is going to give you a little more substance. I've got the onion. I've got the chicken. I'm not going to put that cheese on there. But I am going to put tomato and lots of tortilla chips. <laughs> because, like, I mean, i got to have something, right? I don't, oh, yeah. I don't have cheese. Look, Rich, there's some going to be extra. <laughs> <laughs> we had to stop ourselves all day from eating this. I actually want to try the cheeseless pizza side by side with the pizza. Oh, no, cheese. really? Okay. Yeah, we should do that. See the difference. Yeah, I don't believe in fake cheese because it just reminds me that I can't have cheese. And it doesn't taste like cheese. <laughs> and most of it, I mean, there's some better ones out there now. I'm basing a lot on, you know, previous cheeses mm. that I have tried and I didn't like. But I think it's more of a challenge anyways to, to make something that is totally cheeseless and, and good. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of like my shtick. OK, cutting pizza is probably very boring on the audio part. <laughs> I'm cutting the pizza. And <laughs> it's very colorful. It looks yes, really very good. colorful yeah. pizza. Okay, you want a piece of that? Okay, there's yours. Big knives are great serving pieces to that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like having a spatula and a knife <laughs> all in one. Thank you. Okay. Oh, napkins. I'll let you handle that, Rich, because I'm wired. <laughs> okay, let's try this. So you're gonna hey. try, are you going to try the dairy-free first or the... I'm only trying the dairy-free. But are you guys going to try the dairy-free or the regular first? I'm going to try the regular okay. first. 
Thank you. Mmm. Oh, that's not it's bad. It's filling already. Well, that's pretty good. Oh, wow. So, because I did try the cheese one, I am missing the cheesy goodness, but I am getting lots of flavor from the toppings and the sauce. The tortilla chips on the top are, as the crunch element, is a great mm -hmm. touch. I like having a crunch on the top of pizza. So when you're making pizzas, you really, like I said before, anything goes. I mean, most people I don't think would think to put a crunchy element and put all mm -hmm. the cold elements, but a pizza is no different than any other dish. So you would mm -hmm. put some, you know, garnishes on any other dish that mm -hmm. you make. So we encourage that. Well, it ends with an enchilada. There's always the pico or just the tomatoes mm -hmm. on top. That's, it adds that freshness to it. Yeah, this is pretty good. I do like my sauce. It worked out well. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time since I've had enchilada sauce. It's almost similar to a cheeseburger pizza in a way, too. Yeah, we've made some of those, too. Those mm -hmm. are pretty good. We like to put ketchup and mustard on our cheeseburger pizza. Oh, well, of course. <laughs> it's a cheeseburger. <laughs> Which, again, sounds strange, mm -hmm. but for some reason works. Yeah, you could also top it with avocado. Yep. I was thinking about doing an avocado, avocado crema, but I was like, okay, no, I have enough components yeah. in here. I'll no. stop. This is a good classic. I like it a lot. I think it's, it's really good. good. For sure. And it wasn't too hard to make, really. I mean, there's with pizza, the thing about pizza is there are a lot of components, mm -hmm. but um, most of the time the components are pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Except if you're making a Thai pizza, I might have made that a little a tad too <laughs> difficult. Well, it sounds like that would be difficult to make into a pizza. <laughs> Well, it was. It was getting the Thai, the thai sauce, and I, mm -hmm. I didn't even try to see if I could find a, a, a pre-made Thai mm -hmm. sauce, because I, I, I figured I would probably f not find one gluten-free, and I think I wanted the challenge of, of making yeah. it, because I'd never made it before mm -hmm. anyway. So. It's a good idea. Perfect. So what's the thing you miss the most, being gluten-free, or do you miss anything? Mm. I think I miss, initially I missed all the craft beer. Mm -hmm. More for the social aspect of going to breweries and, right. you know, trying the different flavors. Um, Food-wise, I, I, I don't know. I don't feel like I'm missing much of anything anymore. Well, that's good. Then, yeah, then I think I've just gotten used to it. And so there are so many substitutes that it's, you know, it's not like I'm really missing out. It's, it's more of the ease of what's available. Because it's a lot available. more work. It's a lot you more have work to think to about you it. Want. You have to yeah. bring snacks with you in case whatever is provided at the event or wherever right, you're going exactly. isn't It's okay. more of an inconvenience. Mm -hmm. And um, so how were holidays for you? Did, was that a big transition? for? How would your family um, yeah. accept all this? It really wasn't bad. My mom, I think, um, we usually go over there for holidays. And so she probably did more research than I did right off the oh, bat. I know. Wonderful. It was so sweet of her. And so... Um, so she, she knew more <laughs> than I did with what's okay and what's not. And so, and if there is something, I mean, sure, like, hey, feel free to make gluten stuff. I'm totally fine. I don't need to eat everything. And so, um, you know, she would let me know if what I can have, what I can't. And she'd try to do her best to make an option for me or well, that's make it nice. so that it's an option. I read that there's... I'm a member of quite a few groups mm -hmm. on Facebook. One of them is, it's, it's really long. It's the something, something, celiac. And, but I, I, mm -hmm. Anyways, <laughs> but I, I, get a, I see a lot of their feed, and, and there's too many times I see people on there just venting because they need to vent about mm -hmm. their family. Yes. Being, it's like, yeah, I went over there, and they gave, they, gave, you know, they gave me this whatever it was that had gluten in it, and they didn't understand, mm -hmm. they didn't seem to care. And it, it's just so sad. Yeah. I mean, it, if, if your family member had diabetes or well, just you know Anything, or whatever, yeah. would you sit there here? Here, have this bowl of candy or, right, or whatever. You, yeah. you would never do that. But I don't, I don't understand why some families can't wrap I their know. hand around. I, it I'm very sad. thankful I don't have that issue, but I've heard of yeah, this, people who go through that. Yeah, it's it, it's mm -hmm. crazy, and I'm you know like Rich has been supportive of, of my gluten free mm -hmm. lifestyle since the get go, and um, he doesn't feel like he's missing out. Do mm -hmm. you? No. <laughs> Good answer. Good he, answer. He's like, I, I got to go to the store, and he, and, he, and he can go get a slice of pizza. Yeah, he can go wherever <laughs> if he needs but I don't to get think something. He, he feels like he's missing mm -hmm. out anyway. So he doesn't eat nearly yeah. as much gluten as he used to, obviously, because mm -hmm. we don't eat anything at home. Sure. 
Even when we eat out a lot of times, so we'll if I get a, like if we're getting our you pizza might crust, share. yeah, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll share a pizza or something, yeah. so or a sandwich. And um, <clears throat> our big thing now is we take our baguette into restaurants and have them make sandwiches on it because because well, okay. generally the gluten free offering is not our favorite. Right. We've had one one place say no, we can't do that. But well, I was going to say, I would think they might have to have you sign a waiver or... No, they just flat out, we can't okay. do that. But okay. we went to another location of that same franchise, which will go unnamed. And they're like, oh, yeah, we'll make this for like, you. Sure, why not? Well, yeah, nice. so because um, I miss sandwiches out at restaurants. And I don't mm -hmm. particularly like the options that they have. Um, yeah. And oh, not to just totally keep plugging myself, but... <laughs> Please do. <laughs> lose, lose Italian specialties. Do you okay. know, you know no, them? No. It's uh, were, um, part of Rosenberg. Rosenberg, part of oh, the Rosenberg oh, chain. Oh, they are, okay. Oh my God, they, they serve our baguettes. Oh, good. <laughs> and I finally got a sandwich on it, and it, the not even, the, the baguette was great, it was perfect, mm -hmm. but the, the component of, they were so fresh, so wonderful. I had, what did I have, a roast, did I have the roast beef? Rich? Roast beef, yeah. yeah. And um, I've had roast beef sandwiches, my favorite, all over mm -hmm. the place, and it was, it was phenomenal. Just so good. It was not cheap, mm -hmm. which I didn't expect it would be, but right. it was worth it. Yeah. It was I had had a roast beef sandwich at another sandwich shop and paid a lot more money mm -hmm. than I thought that I should have. <laughs> and I looked and it was it was like a premium. It was like here you have roast beef and oh, we have the premium roast beef. I'm like, yeah, I'm getting that. I felt like I didn't get enough meat. Yeah. And I thought, it's still, you know, when it's, something like that happens to you, you never forget that. Whether oh, you no. were right or wrong, it doesn't yeah. matter. It's, and it's like, <laughs> now I compare everything to that, but this, it mm -hmm. was just, oh, it was so good. And what did you, did you have oh, the gosh. porchetta? No, the Italian. You had the Italian. That was really, oh. I'm going to, I'm going to get that. Yeah, it's because it's losing. It's I'm, well, now I'm going to have to go. You have cause... to go. It's over off Downing and uh, not Champa. I don't know, somewhere over there okay. down near Champa. Oh, perfect. I forget I'll which have street to go it check. Is. I think another hard thing that I come across, which I appreciate greatly, <laughs> a lot of friends will make something specifically for me if they know I'm coming over. Oh, that's very nice. So, hey, I made you cookies, or I made you... <laughs> so if you want to try to maybe either go dairy-free or, you know, not do the carbs, not do the sweets, you almost feel obligated. <laughs> yeah, to well, eat they it, made it for you. You better like, eat it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but I'm, you know what? Yes, I'll take it. But on Why the other not? hand, before you went gluten free, did anybody make you cookies? No, no. <laughs> not, not specifically for me. No. <laughs> so I guess just like okay. I mean, yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. Well, now that, that's My all. Will I, be fine. I'll take a salad instead of the cookies next yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> But that that is very nice that people are yeah, actually making very, you food. That's good. I think a lot more people are more aware of it and. Yeah, and we, we've done a lot of events Hoping lately, and we were feeding non-gluten-free people. Mm -hmm. um, it was just the type of events we were doing, and the response from the non-gluten-free was so amazing. And so we tell everybody, it's like, you you, you, you have a gluten-free friend, I'm sure, because mm -hmm. we heard that for, what, a year and a half at demos. It's like, yeah, I got a friend, I got a cousin. Almost every single person was saying that. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, everybody does. So we were at Pizza Palooza, and we were okay. serving pizza, and we had these little cards that says, tell a gluten-free friend. But everybody was so responsive, and they, they loved it. And they're like, yeah, I got a friend, I'm going to tell mm -hmm. them, I'm going to tell them. So that has changed since I went gluten-free. It, mm -hmm. It's now it's like this community. People everybody know about it now. Right, and everybody mm -hmm. wants to help their friends yeah and so that's pretty cool yeah definitely it's nice so if there was one thing you wish and it doesn't sound like there was going to be an answer to this question but I'm asking <laughs> it, if there's one thing you wish people knew about what is a struggle or what is challenging mm -hmm. that they don't what would it be um that's a good question probably that <laughs> that's a good question. Well, if you don't have an answer, that's okay. Uh, well, no, I think probably that, yes, I am aware of what I can eat and what I can't and what I need to look for. And um, a lot of times people will try to step in and give me, oh, you can have this and you can have this and this. And I'm like, I know, They're I know, it's okay. It's almost too helpful. And, oh, okay. um, It's not a bad thing, no, but there's no. times when you might be overwhelmed. I know when I first was diagnosed, I think that's when it's more critical and you're, you're just trying to comprehend and you're looking at the menu and trying to figure and it out. And you've got to read all the labels and mm -hmm. reread and, and ask all, I, I've become I mean, I've, that person yeah. in a restaurant now. Yes, it's you like, have to. Okay. And, 
just camp out. We're going to have a conversation. Right. We have and all I'm these. sorry I'm this person, but I need to. I know, to. and I always apologize for to it, do. too. Mm -hmm. We were at Barcelona. We went okay. um, for the first time. Have you been there? I have not, but I've heard of it. I've heard um, it was really good, and our server was so amazing. I told her, I said, I'm gluten and dairy free, mm -hmm. and she grabs my menu, and she says, I'll be right back. And we could see because it's an open kitchen. She's, you know, checking things with, mm -hmm. with the kitchen, with the chef. With the yeah, chef. She just and them. she came back and she marked up the entire menu oh, of nice. what I could and couldn't eat. Yes. That's I was amazing. like, oh my God. Yeah, that it was. It makes it so much easier, too. Oh, yeah. If they have a separate menu or do something like yeah. that, then you don't even have to look at anything else. You just know. Yeah, I knew exactly There's what my I options. Could eat. And yeah, I and it was that. a pretty, you know, it was, it was a good, it was mm -hmm. a pretty big menu. And um, something, most of the time you can kind of tell, but sometimes yeah. there's either gluten or dairy lingering someplace mm -hmm. and it's not always listed. But I was right. just so amazed and thrilled that, that she did that. that. that it was, was, it was really pretty yeah. wonderful. But it's, um, it's much better than it used to be. Yeah, for sure. definitely. I mean, there's still times you're crying in the grocery aisle but <laughs> yeah and it's like it, it, it happens you go somewhere and you think you're going to be able to eat there mm -hmm. and your your one option is a green salad with <laughs> oil and vinegar you're like, i'm good i'm good this, I'm this will fill me up i'll be good, good. <laughs> but everybody else at the table is eating all this amazing food that does not happen as much anymore no thankfully. probably the hardest thing is is traveling though yeah that absolutely. is still difficult mm -hmm. and you're in a new city and you don't have your people to say go here or whatever yes. and you got to rely on luckily there's a, there's like a, a gluten-free whatever city in, on Facebook mm -hmm. for every city yes. that's helpful too but then at the same time you don't know the area so it's like well right. how far away is this you don't know who's actually pretty aware with the gluten-free lifestyle and who's right. not right exactly and then we do a lot of road trips a okay. lot of traveling around yes. and um, We'll bring food. I'll be. I'll be really great. It's uh -huh. like last year we just went to Iowa last weekend. Okay. It's like I had my tuna fish salad. I had. I had all this stuff, and it was great <laughs> on the way out there. And on the way back, I'm like, oh darn, I didn't make anything. <laughs> what so, do I eat now? Yeah, and so it it, it, it wasn't pretty. And yeah. we usually stay in um, like a like a Homewood Suites where it has a little kitchenette mm -hmm. so we can make food. Oh, we rarely nice. go out to eat when we yeah, when we when travel because it's just one, it's less expensive to mm -hmm. not go out to eat, and two, it's um, it's just safer and easier. Yeah, because you just never you, know. You just have a better especially on vacation. This wasn't vacation, but on a trip, mm -hmm. you don't want to get sick. Oh yeah, that, that's like the worst. You think thing. about the next few days of what's going on. You don't want to be right. Yeah, so you I, account. I don't take any chances yeah, when I'm away from absolutely. home. Not that I take too many when I'm here, but yeah, um, yeah. traveling <laughs> I think difference. is still the one thing that is um, the most challenging. Mm -hmm. I would I would guess, but other than that, it's getting easier. I think yeah, more slowly. Options. Yeah. So where's the yeah. next pizza place you're going? Have you already scoped it out? So I think we're gonna do Denver Pizza Co. Okay, the on Mayfair. Because um, the 11th doesn't I have seating, right? The 11th. Which one? Oh. Both are carry out only. What? Yes. Okay, yes. well, okay. that's, that's news. A, So it's going to be a home party then. Yeah. <laughs> they have some amazing that might be a more fun party, though. Actually, that could be. yeah. Go pick it up and bring it. Yeah, because so. they've got a new location in Mayfair where you're. What? I remember seeing that, so that's what I was thinking we'd Is go to. Is that close to your part of town? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That is carry out only. Okay. Yeah, yeah and then the okay. other one's on the 11th. Yeah, well, that's they've been good getting to know. some really good reviews. Okay. Yeah. I saw another one today. Yeah, so. looking forward to that. And they have our crust. So. Oh, good. <laughs> I did go to Marco's. Was that last week? Marco's so Marco's Fire. They downtown. make their own, and they do a really good job. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was pretty. I could tell it was homemade for sure. And it was, yeah. It was pretty good. So, so yeah, Westward, good. Westward said uh, Denver. We did a review of Denver Pizza Company on Jersey Street and said their gluten-free crust was indistinguishable from the oh. conventional pizza. I know that was a great. Honor. I'll have to bring someone who can try both. Try both, and see, yeah. See the difference. That that was yeah. I remember that seeing that. And I was like, whoa, okay, yeah. that's pretty cool. I like the sound <laughs> of that. But yeah, they have aren't all their pies are um, named after Colorado things, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that if you're looking for interesting pizzas, a more yeah. specialty that they that's have gonna, a lot. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. Totally fun. So what else is on? Is there anywhere else you've been meaning to go and you haven't been? I feel like there's quite a few you should do new one spots at, now, at Bardo. Too. You should do the yes, club Bardo. at Bardo. It's going to be on my list. Um, I'm starting up the supper club. I love Hapa Sushi. They have a good gluten-free menu. So yeah, so that way you can work that It be a good in. excuse just to get back there again. But uh, oh, yeah, so I got to start a list for the supper club. The oh supper my club. goodness. Yeah. yeah, I'll keep you posted on yeah. what we do. So. One of my favorite places is, um, and it's near here, it's um, uh, 
Humboldt, which used to be called Strings, oh, yes. on the corner of Humboldt and mm -hmm. 17th. Crispy broccoli. That's all I need to say. <laughs> Crispy broccoli with pepperoncini, pepperoncini aioli. It's like oh, my, my favorite. That sounds amazing. It is really, really sounds good. It's really good. Yeah. And they're pretty gluten-free friendly. They have a lot of mm -hmm. different stuff. But okay. you can't have the Brussels sprouts. They're not gluten-free. Oh, I know. It's just a bummer. Sometimes you have your mind set on one item. And you know, isn't that the worst thing? Yes. It's like you look at it on the menu, you're like, it looks okay, and mm -hmm. you get excited, and then you ask the server, and they're like, no. no. And then you're like, oh. You're like, well, well I guess I can't well, have you know, anything now. Oh, yeah, I don't want anything. Forget <laughs> it. Let's I'm go done. somewhere else. <laughs> Just it's, give me wine. That's it's, fine. You know what it is? I think it's that right there, that exasperation and disappointment <laughs> that is hard to explain to people. Yeah. Yeah, that, so you get I mean, it. it's, yeah. it's just, yeah, you're not trying to have a little pity party, but, but sometimes, <laughs> you just, sometimes it's just there. Yeah, it know? is. It's definitely there. <laughs> well, thank you so much for thank being you. on. This has been so yes. much fun. I'm excited to finish my and pizza. And so your pizza is going to go on the website, be Perfect. named after you. you you're, oh, you're, nice. you're immortalized okay. forever. Oh, great. Yeah. Perfect. And so at the recipe I'll be up there and people will be able to, uh, to make it at home if they want. Okay. And then um, I'll get the information up there about the pizza club so you can yeah. get lots more people. Yes, you better be have great. a big house because I think you're going to have a lot of people. <laughs> that that'll be fun. Let's do it. Yeah. Thanks Perfect. again. Thank you.